To get started with Kali Linux, reboot your laptop or desktop, go into the BIOS, and make sure you've enabled virtualization. This is different for every system, so go online, look up your specific computer. Next, download VirtualBox. You can download this for Windows, OS X, or Linux. While you're at it, grab the extension pack. This includes proprietary drivers for USB and various graphics chips acceleration technologies. The simplest way to get started with Kali Linux is to download the pre-made VirtualBox image here at offensive-security.com. Instead, I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux from the raw ISO image. It'll give you a little better um, customization for this virtual machine, sometimes a little better performance as well. Go to kali.org slash downloads. I suggest the 64-bit version. It'll be slightly faster than the 30-bit version, but it'll also give you access to more RAM. You can do the easy way, which is downloading the ISO image directly from the website. The problem is that if you have any problems in your network connection, particularly on Wi-Fi, it will corrupt the download. So the safer way to do it is to download the torrent file here. Once you have all that going, start at VirtualBox. Click on New. Type in Kali-Linux-2.1-AMD64. Leave the type to Linux. Set the version to Debian 64-bit. This is intentional because on this list, you'll see all the major versions of Kali, or maybe like all the major versions of Linux, but you won't see Kali. But that's okay because Kali itself is a fork of Debian. So select Debian, click Next. I usually set my RAM to 2048, which is two gigabytes. I would really suggest not going below one gigabyte for Kali. And if you're going to be using it on a day-to-day -day basis, give it up to four gigabytes. So click Next. Select Create a Virtual Disk Now. Leave the default to Virtual Disk Image. Leave it as Dynamically Allocated. All right. I like to give my Kali images between 20 and 40 gigabytes. If you're just doing really basic testing, do 20 gigs. If you're going to be doing things like password cracking, which will involve downloading things like rainbow tables and password lists, go to 40 gigs. So to be on the safe side, let's give it 40 gigs. Click on create. All right. So we have the image now. Now this image does not have anything built into it yet. It's literally just a VM with nothing on it. So click start. After you've clicked start, click on the small folder icon here. Go to your downloads folder and select the ISO image you previously downloaded. So you can see here it's Kali-Linux-2016.1-AMD64.ISO. What this will do is we'll mount the ISO image as a uh, CD-ROM. Once that's booted, go down to install. After you boot it up, select English. I'm in the United States, so leave that as a default. Leave the keyboard settings to American English. This will take about 10 seconds to load up. Next, configure your network. The default host name is Kali. Leave that. Press Enter. Leave the domain name blank. Press enter. Your root password can be whatever you like. The default normally used is root spelled backwards, T-O-O-R. So let's use that. Enter it twice. Press enter. I'm in Boston, so I'll leave the time zone as Eastern Standard. Right now it's going through and setting up the partition manager. So again, go with the defaults, guided, use entire disk. Select the first one. You can see here it's 42.9 gigs. It's a little different than 40 gigs, but don't worry about it that much. All files on one partition, enter. Finish partitioning, right change the disk, enter. Right changes, use the uh, arrows on your keyboard, press left. Enter. This will go through and actually start creating the partitions for Kali and installing the files. This process takes about 15 to 20 minutes, so 
get up, go for a walk, take some time. All right, after everything's all installed, it'll ask you if you want a network mirror. Just leave the default to no. Press right and enter. When it asks to install the Grub Bootloader, just select the default yes, click enter. Press down, select dev-sda. When it shows finish the installation, just press enter to continue. This will restart the VM. The machine will reboot. Enter the username as root, R O O T, password as T O O R. Now we have a running Kali Linux instance. However, it doesn't have all of the features of VirtualBox built in yet. Check my notes here in the video comments here. So after we do the install, we're going to open up Ice Weasel, which is the first icon on the left hand side. We're going to search for Kali Linux repo. Click on the first link here at docs.cali.org. Scroll down a bit and you'll find this, the Kali rolling repo. This is the latest cutting edge source. Select it, control C to copy. Minimize the browser, open a terminal window. Type in sudo nano slash etsli slash apt slash sources dot list. This is the default repo, which you see has it all been commented out. Press control shift V to paste. Press control O to save the file, enter. Now press control X to exit. Type in sudo space apt dash get space update. This will go and download the references to all the newest packages for Kali. Takes a few seconds. All right, next we're gonna install Build Essential, DKMS, and Linux headers. So type in sudo space apt slash, I was like dash get, install space dash y, which will automatically install everything, build dash essential space DKMS space Linux dash headers dash AMD 64. All right. DKMS. Press enter. This will take a few minutes. It's downloading roughly 50 megabytes total. All right, time to install the guest editions. So on Windows, Mac, OS X, Ubuntu, whatever system you're running, go to Devices, click on Insert Guest Editions CD Image. By default, it'll pop up a window and say, do you want to run? Click Cancel. Now type in sudo space bash space slash media slash CD ROM zero slash V capital V, capital B, lowercase ox, capital L. Now type tab, which will auto-complete the file name for you. Linux additions dot run, press enter. This will go through and actually install the VirtualBox um, Linux kernels modules. And what's really nice about this one, it'll give you things like the ability to share the clipboard, drop and drag files, uh, use more advanced uh, graphics features, things like that. It takes about five minutes to install. All right, looks like everything installed correctly. Type in exit, close, and go into the top right-hand corner and click the small triangle here. 
and click on the power icon. Go to power off to shut down the VM. All right, now we can start enabling more of the uh, advanced features. So select your image, click on settings. We're gonna go shared clipboard by directional, drop and drag by directional. System, all right, has two gigs of RAM, IO APIC is enabled. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now, if you're on a desktop system, you actually can give Kali more than one CPU core. Uh, I normally don't, so. Definitely enable uh, PAE slash NX. This will uh, accelerate memory access. All right, leave pair virtualization to default. Enable VTX, nested paging, that's pretty good. Uh, by default, I like to give the video RAM 128 megabytes. It's not really required, you can probably get by with 32, but you know, if you just want a really good video performance, just give it everything you can. Um, do not enable 3D or 2D acceleration. This is mostly intended for Windows VMs, so you, we don't need this for Linux. All right, it's looking pretty good. Click OK and restart the VM. Username is root, password is T-O-O-R. Click on files and click on the eject symbol. All right. Now, the one downside you'll see right now is the window itself is a bit small. So you can go into view, Virtual screen one, resize. I like to do 1280 by 720. And boom, there you go. So you can choose the various resolutions you like to work with, things like that. So yeah, this is how you get Kali Linux running with the VirtualBox additions installed. If you have any issues at all, let me know in the comments. So now that everything's working correctly, we're gonna shut it down one more time. Now, we're going to create a uh, snapshot. This is a, a backup image of the VM. What's nice about this one is if you change things or break something and you want to roll back, this will let you do this. But the virtual machine must be turned off. So, have Kali, go to snapshots, click on the uh, camera icon. I usually just call this one initial. Click OK. And boom. There you go. You have a fully running Kali Linux 2.1 instance, which is snapshotted. So feel free to mess around with Kali and honestly do some crazy things, you know, try and break this because it's okay. You've taken the snapshot. So if you ever destroy something, you can immediately roll back. If you have any issues at all or find differences between this install in Ubuntu versus Windows or OS X, let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed.